Hey guys, Data Orchestration Guru here. And today I'm gonna to teach you how you can set up a DAG that will actually use inner DAG dependencies using the external task sensor and the external task marker to chain together multiple DAGs within a data pipeline. So this is really useful if you wanna have, if you have you know, a really large and complex data pipeline um, that consists of multiple DAGs, but you wanna be able to chain those DAGs together um, in a non-rigid way. So instead of relying on time-based scheduling, you can rely on sensors. So when actions are actually completed, then the next DAG starts. Um, so in this example, a child task is going to depend on, and one DAG is going to depend on a parent task in another DAG. When that parent task is cleared with recursive selected, the external task marker is going to tell Airflow to clear child task one and start triggering its downstream tasks. Um, so that external task sensor, it's gonna keep poking the status of the remote task marker task at a regular interval time until something happens. What are we looking for? What are those things? Well, we're looking for the external task sensor to reach the state mentioned in the allowed state list. So this is basically saying, hey, I want this marker and this sensor to look for a certain state um, and then use that as the triggering mechanism for downstream tasks. Um, and so once it reaches that state, um, it'll start triggering the rest of the tasks in the second DAG. Um, and then obviously if that fails, then it's going to raise an airflow exception and the user will handle this with some other downstream tasks. So kind of branch decision making here. Um, and then finally, if the external task sensor times out, again, we're just gonna raise an airflow skip exception um, or a timeout. Um, so now that we've kind of laid the groundwork, let's get into actually building the DAG. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do here, as we do with all of our DAGs, is import some packages. So future annotations, this is just letting us write Python from uh, using 3.7 annotations at 3.6. Um, Pendulum is for date time. Um, Airflow, importing DAGs, guess what we need that for? Writing a DAG. Uh, empty operators for creating empty operators, since this is kind of just a dummy test case. Um, and then for sensors, we're going to import the external task marker and the external task sensor. Um, then we are going to set a pendulum date time um, as our start date. So now that we've got all the building blocks set up, let's start writing our DAG. So for our first DAG here, we're gonna keep it pretty simple. Um, so this is just the DAG that we're going to use to basically mark a state change, then trigger our downstream DAG. Um, so with this, you're gonna set a DAG ID, start date, catch up false, schedule none, um, and then just set a tag. This is just for the Airflow UI. Um, and then we're gonna call it parent DAG since it is the first DAG in our two DAG data pipeline. Um, so we've got all the basics out. Let's start writing this actual DAG. So now this is going to be an incredibly simple DAG um, in which all we're doing is just creating an external task marker, which is just going to mark this task as being done. Um, so here we're gonna have to set an external DAG ID so it knows what uh, DAG that it's actually going to be linked to downstream. So this is the next DAG in our data pipeline that we're going to use. Um, and then the external task ID. This is going to be the task that is actually sensing and pinging this external task marker to trigger downstream tasks. Um, so really simple first DAG here. This is actually the end of it. And so now that we've got our parent DAG set up, let's write our child DAG. So now pretty similar setup. We're going to create our second DAG. So this case, we're calling the DAG ID external task marker child, since it's the second DAG to our parent. Um, then we have the start date, scheduled none, catch up false, and a tag of example two. Um, so we're gonna call this one child DAG. And again, got the basics out of quickly, pretty quickly, so let's start writing the tasks. So here we have the first actually interesting task um, in this DAG, which is the external task sensor. Um, and so with this, you're gonna have a task ID, set your external DAG ID. In this case, we're gonna CC parent DAG dot DAG ID, and this is gonna reference this parent DAG, so you can do something similar for your setup, um, as well as the external task ID. So this is, again, looking at that parent task, which we can see parent task uh, and dot task ID. Um, so it knows to look for its task ID, which is also parent task. Um, set a timeout, so if it doesn't sense uh, any state change in that external task marker, then just time out and throw an error. Um, so we don't want it to be pinging for too long. There's nothing happening, because then that indicates, hey, something's probably gone wrong. Um, and then allowed states. So what this is doing is reading the state of this external task marker and saying, hey, is it a success? If so, then trigger yes, hey, we're all good, and start triggering tasks downstream from this task. Um, and then down here, failed states. So if it detects this external task marker is failed or skipped, then it's gonna throw an exception and fail. Um, and so 
what we have down here is reschedule. So if something fails, uh, it's going to just reschedule that prior ta that's task sensor um, and start waiting for the next one. Um, so you can look up the documentation. There's a few different modes you can use here um, for what you want the downstream uh, condition to be after that task has failed or is successful. Then, finally, we have our second child task. Um, so this is actually going to be looking at the same task. So we see here we have you know timeout, external task group ID, um, everything pretty much the same. Um, the difference here is that it is for a task group. So this is if let's say hey you know I actually have a dynamic number of tasks within that parent DAG and I wanna wait on all of those tasks within that task group to be completed. In this case, you're going to use the external task group ID to actually just look at that task group at, a, at aggregate instead of each individual task. Um, so if you have kind of a branching DAG before your child task, this is a really good way to accommodate all of those state changes. Um, so now that we've got our both our task sensors set up, these will be pinging this external task marker um, to see, hey, has it completed, has it not, and then trigger downstream tasks. Um, so then if we take a look at the bit mapping for this, we can see that we have child task three. We're just gonna set an empty operator that's going to arise after both of these tasks are complete um, because we don't, I don't really care about adding anything else in this. The main point of this video is just to show you how to use the external task sensor. You go off and use them for whatever you want. Um, and then finally down here, we just have pretty simple bit mapping of child task one, two, and then into three. Um, and what's also important to note here is task sensors aren't always the best option. Um, if you can use deferrable operators, that is a much better solution for you because it's not going to require the compute that an external task sensor does. With this sensor, because it's pinging this parent task um, on a regular basis, it does consume a decent amount of compute resources. So if you're able to write your tasks in a deferrable or asynchronous way, that's going to give you less rigidity um, in your DAGs. So, but not all operators support deferrable uh, tasks. So that's where task sensors come into play where, hey, you know, if I have an operator or a use case where I can't use a deferrable operator, or maybe you even just want a sensor, um, this is what you'll use. But just always keep in mind, if you can make it deferrable, it's best practices and it'll also save you money in production. Um, so now that we've got this all written, let's look at the graph. Gotcha. So there's not really much of a graph to show for this one. It's pretty much just gonna be the parent task um, and then in a separate task, DAG, the child task. That is still one of the big issues with the Airplay UI is it struggles to show inner DAG dependencies. Um, and that's where a tool like Lineage or another monitoring tool can actually come into play to help you visualize these inner DAG dependencies because right now it's not really supported through the Airflow UI. If you're passing a data set between DAGs, that can work from the data set view. Um, but in this case, we're pretty much just using a sensor. So there's no data set to actually uh, monitor the flow from it, of it from one DAG to another. Um, so just wanted to kind of illustrate this so you know some of the downsides and the visualization capabilities from this approach uh, if you're not using additional tooling. Um, but I really hope you learned something, uh, even though it is a little bit outdated, this is still a powerful tool for certain use cases. Um, so again, like and subscribe, as I always ask if you, you know, learned something in this video, if you wanna see more, and if you have a particular use case that you're really interested in seeing, hit me up, message me, comment, email me. My email's in my description. Um, I am doing this for the data orchestration community for you. Um, so however I can help you, that's what I wanna do. So have a good one, guys. Bye.